Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending this session. My name is Guilherme, and I am an inner source officer at SAP. And I will talk to you today about how we run our inner source program and how we create and maintain documentation to support this. Let's jump right into it. First, how do we run inner source? Or, or who are we that run inner source at SAP? We are a working group called Reuse and Inner Source. And this work group is part of a larger cross-company initiative called Cross-Product Architecture. This initiative has many different work groups. We are just one of them, and all of them work in a very similar way with a very similar structure. So it's very easy to understand the work of one based on the work of the other, or at least the way they work. And what do we want to do and what is your our mission is to establish a reuse and inner source culture at SAP. And how do we do that? So with a few steps or a few actions that we do, first, we define the strategy. We have released a document earlier this year containing the strategy of inner source for SAP. We also create tooling. You may, you may have heard already about the inner source portal uh, that is uh, released as open source by SAP. This is one example of tooling that we create. This was already presented in inner source commons before. We also advise projects and teams to introduce inner source, to adopt inner source. And we do that not only in person or in talks, but also by providing documentation, guidelines, and how to's. And this is one of the things that I'm going to focus on today. We also promote inner source methodology inside the company, like for instance, with presentations and we bring external presenters. In the beginning of this year, we brought Denise Cooper to speak about inner source in a big event together with our work group. And one of the most important points that I want to highlight here, we do our best to lead by example. So we try to apply the inner source methodology and its philosophy to everything that we do. Now, a little bit more on how the work group works. First, the roles that we have, the coordinator. This is a person that takes care of the most uh, administrative tasks of the work group. So it's responsible for our, our meetings, our communication, uh, for our processes that uh, ensures that we are following them and also to keep the backlog in a good shape. So it's a main point of contact for anybody outside of the work group. The colleagues, they co own the backlog together with the coordinator and they are inner source experts that are responsible for leading this initiative, for moving it forward, for defining the tasks, the priorities, and for taking the day-to-day -day decisions of, of the work group. The contributors, as the name says, are the people that are working actively on tasks that we have in our work group. And the interested people, well, this is an actual role, people register as interested, they are observers. They can uh, see everything that we are doing and they can also participate in our, uh, our meetings. They are invited to them and they can give feedback. They can actually participate in any way that they want, but uh, they will only be contributors if they are actually working on a specific task that we have. Uh, how we how we communicate, how we meet. So we have one open forum that is a weekly call. Everybody in the work group is invited to participate and anyone outside of the work group could also participate. They are just not invited because they didn't register to it. But we discuss really anything here related to inner source. We give updates on the work in progress. We ask people for their opinion. We answer questions from the audience if they came here to ask something. So it's really an open forum, open for every topics related to inner source and open for anyone that is interested. Of course, we take detailed notes and we record this and we send later to all the members of the work group. So if they cannot attend, they can also consume it asynchronously and come back with their questions. We report our progress and our roadmap quarterly, not only to the members of our work group, but this is part of this larger initiative that I mentioned. All these reports from these different work groups are aggregated and sent to the stakeholders of the whole initiative so that they can be informed in uh, specific time uh, places during the year. And then they can easily come back to us and ask questions or try or give feedback to the work that we are doing. And related to that, we maintain an open backlog. So we maintain our tasks in Jira from the roadmap, from the progress report, we link them directly there so they can navigate directly to the to our backlog to get more information, to comment, to give feedback, or, or to even say, hey, I want to participate and contribute on this task. Now to the documentation. How do we document inner source? 
Well, we have a landing page. This is our one-stop shop for InnerSource at SAP. And I want to share a few general things about it. First, and I think this is very important, it is easy to find in our corporate search. It's linked in many places that uh, where, where it will be appropriate to link to InnerSource. So it's not only important to produce good content, but it's also important to take care that it's easy to find. And our corporate search, they are not exactly like Google or any other search that you use. They might behave differently. So take the time to fine tune them, do some internal search engine optimization. The other thing, it is code behind this. It's uh, We apply the practice of documentation as code, meaning uh, for us specifically, everything that you see behind this, it's actually marked down documents that are later rendered as a web page. This makes it very easy for us to apply the same workflows that we apply to code and review it with pull requests and all that kind of stuff. And also, it makes it easy for people to contribute. As I said before, lead by example. We try to do everything that we do as much as possible with our source. So this is, of course, open for contribution. Now I'll give you a quick tour of this web page. The first thing, the first larger section is the getting started section. And this is designed to get people off the ground with the topic of inner source. They come here if they don't know what it is, if they don't know how to get started, they go to our beginner's guide and there we explain first what inner source is in very few words and how it's different from any other traditional uh, collaboration methods. We also have condensed information there. It's a one pager. We put condensed information about things like governance, tooling, and uh, best practices, and provide a little bit of information how to get started for a beginner, really. Then uh, here we also have a link to a learning experience, the Inner Source Dojo. Uh, we will talk about that in more details later. So hang in there. And there is one section here on the getting started that I want to drill down a little bit, is the section on general concerns, myths, and misunderstandings. What we do here, so we have collected already 15 items that are either concerns, myths, misunderstandings, and a few examples of them that we address there, we give a response to them, is, for instance, that inner source is just GitHub or put whatever tool that you wanted to, do, to put there to, to manage your source code. We know that it's important to have the source code controlled and visible, but that alone doesn't make inner source. Inner source is a larger concept. There is collaboration. There is making it easy to contribute. All these things that we know that go around it. So this is a common misunderstanding. Also, there is the misunderstanding that inner source is the same as reuse. Of course, they are related. They are very much related. They go hand in hand, but they are not exactly the same. And th this is important because if you think you are going to uh, to solve all the reuse problems with inner source, maybe not. You really need to think if you have specific reuse problems that need to be addressed other way and not over promise on inner source. Also, we hear that people think that inner source always means distributed responsibility. This is, of course, not true. Distributed responsibility is only one way of governance for a project. And we have to explain that's not the only way. You can do it in other ways. You can have a central responsibility for an inner source project too. And also, some people think that inner sources just means to get developers for free. But we know that doesn't happen. Just putting your project out there doesn't immediately give you resources. You have to work for it. You have to make it attractive. We need to, uh, to convince people that they will get a value back from contributing to your project. These are just some examples. And why is this important? This is important because inner source can be misunderstood. People can practice it the wrong way, or they can think they are practicing it, or they can practice it with the wrong expectations. And if you don't clarify that, it could be easily uh, disappoint people and maybe inner source will become a buzzword and nobody wants that. We need it to continue to be the concept that it is and only get better and not disappoint people. So going back to our tour, the next section that we call just general documents is a section where we deep dive a little bit more on the concepts we touch it in the getting started guide. For example, we have here a guide and a checklist for project maintainers to easily adopt uh, the best practices that we prescribe. And well, I'm focusing on documentation here, but we are also working to automate this checklist, but it's not the focus for today, maybe another uh, presentation. We also have here 
patterns that provide solutions to known inner source problems. We didn't invent this here, of course. We are inspired by the inner source commons patterns. We just keep them internal if they cannot be shared because they contain information that is only uh, or should only be shared with SAP employees. That's why they're internal patterns. We also document here different governance models, and I think this is very important so that people uh, know what different models they can apply to their project. And uh, we have a lot of information here, but just to mention, we have a collection of presentations and events uh, so that people can go back to them at any point in time. We also have a very important piece of documentation here that are case studies and success stories. This is where we capture the inner source experiences at our company. We talk to the projects that are applying inner source, and we want to document here their learnings, their challenges, their motivations, their successes in a structured way. And this serves many purposes. One of them is that it serves as a historical record of how your company is applying inner source. It also serves as a knowledge sharing form so that projects can share what they learn with other people wanting to apply inner source. And last but not least, it helps you promote inner source in your company because if anybody asks, does it really work? Can we apply it here? Well, you have this, you can show them. These people are already doing it in this way and this is the reason they are doing and the benefits they are collecting. Now, one very important part as well is we want people to participate and we want them to feel welcome. So we dedicate a high level section of our documentation on how to get support how to participate, how to contribute, how do we work? So this makes it very easy for people to uh, feel welcome and to start participating. And just on uh, enabling contributions, so you, you will see here that we have directly a link to the source code of the web page and one button where people can directly start to, to edit the page and send a pull request, so facilitating the contribution. And what can happen when you facilitate the contributions? This is a very nice experience that we had. Somebody just sent a pull request fixing typos, a small contribution. Then we took that as an opportunity to talk with this person and understand where it was coming from. And then this person shared this uh, statement with us. Uh, with my current workload, I unfortunately cannot take a more active role, but I stay a silent fan of the inner source approach and the work that you are all doing. So we didn't just got the value of the contribution itself. We also got appreciation with it. With it. And this is uh, one of the reasons it's so good to lower the bar for contribution so that everybody can contribute as easily as possible. Now I mentioned the dojo before, let's jump into that. What is the dojo? The dojo is a place for learning through dialogue and practice. It is also a platform that provides a structured way to learn different knowledge domains, including inner source. And it's composed of uh, self-paced uh, learnings for different domains with the possibility to request orientation from senseis. You can feel here that the inspiration is of course coming from martial arts. It has a belt system that individuals can use to track their own progress and also feel rewarded when they, they learn something new. The platform works fully on GitHub. So we use GitHub pages, issues, pull requests, actions for all the automation we need and all the content that we need to present. Now, how does that work specifically for inner source? So I mentioned the belt system, and this is how we structured it for the inner source domain. The first belt is the white belt, and it's just to tell the, just somebody telling, I am entering the dojo. I am starting now with this experience. The second belt is becoming aware. So understanding what inner source is and being able to explain it to other people. Then the red belt is getting into action. People here are required to either contribute to an inner source project or adopt inner source in a project of their own. And the last stage, the back black belt, it's uh, acceleration where people were expected to multiply inner source. So now they are helping other people to practice. They are presenting inner source in an event, in their own team, in, in, in their organization or something like that. They are helping multiply inner source. And here we use our documentation. We always point back to uh, our documentation during these stages, during these exercises. And what is interesting here is the process to claim about 
is basically sending a pull request and we need to review the pull requests. And during the pull request, the person is expected to do some reflection of what they did and what they learned. And, and it's not only a simple review, but it's a dialogue. We always try to talk to them during this process. So it's very engaging as well. All right, that was the last part. I just want to go to the key takeaways now. Well, first, Internal winner source documentation is essential to scale winner source. You cannot just rely on yourself doing presentations and coaching people. You need to give them the, the means to do it by themselves. Maintaining your documentation as code and open for contributions is a good way to lead by example and also engage people. And last but not least, don't just produce good content, but also be sure that it's linked in the correct places that is easy to find. With that, thank you very much again for being here. I hope I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will welcome now your questions.